Bet. And today we're going to get inside the mind of Jimmy Page. This is Sean and Ted's Musical Adventures. And today, Inside the Mind of Jimmy, Jimmy Page. I tried to pull out all my Pages. Jimmy Page licks. Yeah. You know? And you're probably wondering, well, why are you doing a telly? Well, a lot of people don't realize he was actually more of a telly guy. Yeah. You know? First album was all done on a telly. Later on, it was the. Uh, when when, when, uh, when Gibson decided to give him free Les Pauls or something, it's probably not going to happen. Who knows? But yeah. uh, Inside the Mind. You know? Have you read the books? Have you read Hammer of the Gods and all that stuff? I've read a bunch of different ones over the years, yes. Yes, so yeah. have I. And, and I think from early on, I think that vision of Led Zeppelin, that biggest band in the world thing, I think he was carrying that since he was a kid. I think it's something he always wanted. Well, you know, if, if, you, if you go back to uh, the beginning of him, he started like young and all his all the good guitar buddy friends of his from the time he mm. was 14 all, on. All became famous. All became famous. What, what a scene that was, yeah. eh? What Can you imagine? Like... Well, and, yeah. and not to mention, a lot of people think he just, it was like before Zeppelin, he got his schooling in being a uh, session guy. He played everything, man. Well, I think, you know, I think that's where he learned how to produce those great Zeppelin records. He just sat back, he was at, and he watched the older guys do their thing. And he wasn't even intended to be a producer. I mean, one of the famous mm -hmm. ones, I don't know if you know this, Hurdy Gurdy Man with Donovan. Mm -hmm. He played mm -hmm. on that. Yeah. Yeah, and, he, and he, he was surrounded by the best producers in the world because yeah. England at the time was sort of the pop center, was one of the pop centers, right? Yeah. And so, but I think, I think that, like, he, he, he never intended to be a producer. You know that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. That, um, he, he, um, uh, the story of the yard, you know, he, he joined the Yardbirds at the end. Yes. Wanted to keep them going. Jeff Beck left. Peter Grant, who became Led Zeppelin's manager. Um, they had a little tiny bit of money. They didn't have a label deal, nothing. And they couldn't afford a producer. And so I think Peter Grant has suggested to, you know, Jimmy, why don't you try doing the first record? You, you've been in the studio all the time. Just try it. Yeah. And he said he didn't want to keep going. So, okay, I'll do the first one and then we'll get somebody else to do it. Uh, he did every yeah. single one of them because it was so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, and that's also where we met John Paul Jones, another yeah. studio guy. So, yeah. you know. Yeah, that whole scene was just, he, he got to pick the best of the best and then created. But, pa the, but Paige yeah. himself, I mean, if you look at his... His go, going back in his sort of discography and stuff, all, all the stuff that he had before yeah. before Zeppelin was incredible. If you got a chance, w Wikipedia him. Oh, it's just incredible. Yeah, it goes way back into the mid '60s. Yeah, and and um, yeah, and and you know, do you know how Zeppelin kind of the idea of Zeppelin started? Do you know? How well, I, I know the story. We get inside the mind of Jimmy Page. Right? Yeah, yeah, but the story was uh, Keith Moon said you'll go over like a no, list. it's before. Oh, that. before. Oh. that's the name. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> his friend. You were talking about a childhood friend. His friend had started, had had started. Um, he had left Jeff Beck, had left the Yardbirds, and started the Jeff Beck Band or Jeff oh, Beck yeah. Project. So that first Jeff Beck solo record with Rod Stewart singing, he was literally he wanted to emulate that sound. He he went and saw it. Oh. He listened to it. He goes, I want to do that. And of course, he got a lot bigger. <laughs> but that's how the idea of Zeppelin. Well, came. there you go. He man. saw he saw this sort of super group four piece. You know, this wicked blonde singer Rod Stewart. You know, I don't know if he had any drums, but, it but was, how, do, how do you think he he came up he, where he formulated kind of his sound? Because it was obviously blues based, but there's a lot of shit going on in his his um, vocabulary. Well, playing. It, you can find early footage of Jimmy Page when he's a kid playing bluegrass and stuff on TV. Like yeah. he was so so. I think he just I think he saw Zeppelin as a place to put all everything he learned into one. Because he was a great you know flat picker. You know, yeah. acoustic, you know. That, really? I, mean, I think in some ways he was a better acoustic player than an electric, electric player. player. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And um, he uh, also, too, you know, what one video you have to check out is um, there's a video where he talks about the making of Led Zeppelin. He just you know, he puts the record or the, the making story of Stairway to Heaven. He puts the record and explains the whole thing. And man, I learned something really unique about that as a producer you know, when I produce. He basically said his goal was to 
record the whole thing, the whole seven minute piece without any vocals and making it feel and sound like an epic hit before they even, before uh, Robert Plant even sang on it. And that really, if you really think about it, take the vocals off that song, it's still epic. Well, I think, I think I think any good song, I mean, melody uh, is king, but the, the, the band, should, it should sound great. And I mean, and, and that's what I was going to say about all his, our, our beginning lick and, you know, Hold On Love, when you think about all those, you know. They sound like hits. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Well, the, the, the thing is, is I had an old mentor producer who did really well, who used to always say, Sean, it should, the song should feel and sound like a hit before you even sing one word on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then but, the rest is gravy. But what I'm saying is like all his sort of raw sort of playing is to me is what kind of makes Zeppelin's... You, you can tell they didn't spend tons of time doing guitar tracks. Well, no. Well, again, that goes back to the first record. Yeah. They had no money. They had a week. And so basically they went on tour. They put a bunch of songs together and they basically flew through it in the yeah. studio. And I think that... What, because that record did so well, I think they were encouraged, Peter Grant or them or whatever. I think Jimmy was like, let's keep doing that. Let's not think about it too much. Let's jam, let's write, let's keep. And, and I think that's where they got a lot of their magic. Yeah, and, and of course, they, they, they hearken back to the whole, uh, you know, um, blues kind of stuff that was going on, right? Well, they literally, uh, you know, I don't mean to talk ill of Led Zeppelin, but. You, they're, you know, they literally ripped old blues guys, yeah, yeah, literally, yeah. you know, and, 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 and that's here nor there. I'm not going to voice my opinion on that. Yeah, but, but yeah, they, they also, they, they, also did they some, stole from the blues. But they also, they also wrote some classic, like if you think of, um, I'm just trying to think, uh, Cashmere, you know, our kind of ode that we did in, in well, the, but the, well, if you go inside the mind of Jimmy Page, he, you know where that comes from? He would disappear. They'd be on the road. And then all of a sudden, he'd, they'd have a week off, he'd disappear. Wouldn't tell anybody where he'd go. He talks about that in the books. And then, he'd, and then he'd come back. And one of those trips was he disappeared to India. And he just got lost in India. You know, just whatever. Wandered around India, spending money, whatever. And that's where that comes from, is that... Yeah, you know, you know what I mean? So, uh, I, I, and what I like about Jimmy Page, I think he's a really fearless guy. I think... He's bold and fearless, and he'll do whatever he thinks is right, <laughs> and and he doesn't care. And I think that boldness made him very popular. I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. You know, what was what was the sort of mystic that he liked? Uh, what was the guy's name? Uh, Crowley. Crowley. Yeah, yeah, he was sure. in the mystic. But I think I think that's just more a, a cool way to, to market the band. <laughs> but he did buy his, he did buy his, his the, still. It's yeah. a cool story for Hit Parade, isn't it? It is. Oh, he's yeah. Alice Crowley and the weird symbols and the. I think. Well, let's talk about. I don't think he's a Satanist. If that's what you're getting. Yeah, at. no, no. Let's talk about someone's playing. Give, give me sort of like you know. Well, he loves like, the blues pentatonic. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know the whole. That's really yeah. just going up the blues scale. Yeah. Starting on on the flat seven instead yeah. of the one. So instead of going, he starts here. Mess around with it. I mean, one of the most iconic licks of all time, and I know every guitar player who writes licks wish they wrote it, and it's the simplest thing ever. Yeah. But but not a lot of people realize I played it wrong there. Yeah. You go, uh, Again, pentatonic. But, but you know, some of his diddly diddly diddlies, you know, that's the old. Uh... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it, it, well, he was kind of the first flash guy, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. You know those, those little flashy. <laughs> or the. Uh... You know, that's... <laughs> that's, that's the I line. steal that lick all the time. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, and, and just he took little blues licks and took them to, took them to the next level instead yeah. of just, you know. Right, that's what yeah. the old blues guys would do. But he is more he's more he's more sleazy than Boppy. Yeah, he's sleazy and greasy. And he's a little sloppy, which yeah. which I think which I think adds to his sound. You know, he's oh, gotten absolutely. some criticism for it. But it's now when you look back, it's super vintagey and yeah. you know, you know, all that kind of thing. So um yeah, even this even that the famous Right? Yeah, yeah. It's just pentatonic, man. He just he just took the pentatonic and played it differently. And there's an Eddie Van Halen connection. If you watch the interview where Eddie's at the, um, uh, you know, what is that, Smithsonian thing. Or yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah. He says where he got the idea of tapping. Because he saw Jimmy Page go. <laughs> and he 
you thought, well, what if I did that but replace this finger? And you're like, That's how the tapping started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the tapping came from Jimmy Page. So the mind of Jimmy Page Sli goes into the mind goes of Eddie. Goes into the mind of Eddie. It's all connected. <laughs> and one day we'll do an episode on that. How all the minds connect. <laughs> you know? How about you? What's, uh, what's, you know? Well, I think the first one was when you listened to the first album, the second album, those, those, and you know, of course, rock and roll, all those albums, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, it, the, to me, I, I probably, at the time, I was probably more into John Bonham because, you know, started oh. off as a, a drummer, but all that Love stuff. Love John Bonham. But just that whole sound of Zeppelin, I mean, the four of them, just what they created uh, was, you know. Well, you, you've, you've seen, the, I've seen it in interviews from all of them. They said the first time they got in a room together, they all just looked at each other and they knew it was going to be magic. There yeah. was just something magical about that, you know. Right band, right time, right sound, right bigness. And it still sounds fresh to this day. Just well, I 40, mean, 50 years later. Well, I mean, it's, like, it's, it's stylization. I mean, the, the cool thing is, is when you listen to you, the thing I, I always found funny is you, has, has they progressed, you'd, you'd kind of get, I called it the soft side of Zeppelin with the acoustic yeah. stuff. And then the heavy stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I always found that to be, that was a sound to me. For sure. You That's know? where he, he drew back into the bluegrass acoustic yeah. thing and then the rock and roll thing. And But I mean, this is inside the mind of Jimmy Page. And yeah. I think... I think I think it's important for listeners, especially the young ones that are trying to start in bands and stuff, that you know it's not accidental that that band became the biggest band in the world. It starts with a 13-year-old kid, Jimmy Page, you know, hang. He was on TV playing guitar at 13, 14 years old, working all the time, hanging out with what became what I call the holy trinity of, of rock guitar. You know, Eric Clapton, Jeff Beck, and Jimmy Page, hanging out. They were nonstop guitar all the time. They were going to each other's houses playing all the time. Then he's non-stop playing studio sessions all the time. So by the time he gets to Zeppelin, he's nice and prime. He understands every aspect of the game, including the business, because he'd gone on the road with the Yardbirds and seen some of their failures. So everything he learned, it wasn't accidental. It wasn't like he learned yeah. a song and it, it was it was a huge buildup. He had put in his 10,000 hours by the time that first album came out. Yeah. No doubt about it. So you got to put in your 10,000 hours like Jimmy Page. Yeah. If you want to have a mind like Jimmy Page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, the thing is, I mean, it's 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 not only his guitar playing, it's his writing the whole thing. You his know, writing, his producing, his 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 ability to keep a band together. Or, or form bands. Or form bands. And reform bands. You know, there's, you talk about John Bonham. There's a really cool story which goes deep into the mind of Jimmy Page. Um, John Bonham had played, how he'd heard about him from, from my sources is that uh, he was pl he had played a, a brief stint with uh, Joe Cocker. Yeah. And everybody was talking about this drummer. And he it was, it was sending back then, there's no phones or anything, you know, or no, you can't text anybody or email anybody. So he's sending him telegrams. He was living on a farm in, in Northern England. And uh, Jim, uh, first of all, first John, Paul, John Bonham was ignoring him. And then he was saying, I don't want to tour. I hate touring. Leave me alone. He'll leave me alone. And this is important. This shows through his actions, Jimmy Page never took no for an answer. But, you know, and he got on a bus or train or whatever the hell he, he went all the way up there took him out for drinks and convinced him to join the band, put him all in a room. And that, you know, great band leader, great motivator, great, yeah. you know, all those things. He's not just some guy who's a great, he's, he's, a, he's the whole package, yeah. I think. Uh, absolutely. Well, for my well, research, anyway. Well, well, I mean, I think what he did is he, he took a lot of that old school, you know, the, uh, you know, just really raw. Yeah. Sort of yeah. Well, made, Delta made blues. The blues. Made the blues heavy. Well, but, but, uh, let's look or at that. Or made rock and roll. Well, there was a resurgence. There was a sort of underground blues thing starting. Blues was, was becoming really popular in the United States and England. And it was became really popular. And he went, hmm, what if I just did the pop thing, turn up some amps, yeah. and bang, right sound at the right time, yeah. and, and the rest is history, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But well, that's it. I mean, I mean, we could probably keep going on and on, but I think you've kind, you've kind of, you kind of hit on with some of the licks. So should we, should we rock on out of here? Yeah, let's do it. Let's. let's I'll, I'll try to pull up my best Jimmy Page licks. Subscribe, share, keep coming back. Later. Shine a test, shine a test, physical.